Hello everyone. So, today we're going to be continuing our Explain Correctly series, talking about the ISTJ, or also known as the Inspector. So, if you recall uh, from my J versus P video, as well as my other videos about the introverts, um, I am not going to be um, utilizing um, the usual MBTI convention for what is a J and what is a P. I feel that the um, ill-considered notion that J being derived from whichever of the top two cognitive functions that are rational being extroverted is what constitutes a J. Well, I think that is, it has had a debilitating effect on how the cognitive functions can be well understood. So, no, instead, I go by a consistent approach, which is that um, what makes a J type, in the case of the ISTJ, is having as their dominant function either thinking or feeling, which are rational elements. So, the ISTJ, I would say, is not SI plus TE, but rather TI plus SE. And this is where a real understanding of Jayishness can actually come out, can come about. You actually need TI and SE, not SI and TE, to have the understanding of a J as opposed to a P. Why is this? Well, if you understand TI and SE correctly, then you acknowledge that this is about structure, which is TI, uh, logical structure, um, things being internally consistent, um, that structure being imposed via extroverted sensation onto the physical reality. So this is the true imposition of order combination, TI and SE, not SI and TE, as we will come to see. Now, unfortunately, because of the JP switch difficulty, which the MBTI has encountered, they have confused essentially the ISTJ and the ISTP. The true ISTJ, this order enforcer, this inspector figure, you could say, is very much a type that needs to be TI and SE, not SI and TE. And we'll talk about SI and TE when we eventually reach the ISTP, explained correctly. So now I'm, let's talk about this ISTJ. Well, as I said, TI and SE is that order enforcing uh, combination. And the idea here is that introverted thinking is the dominant function. This is the, what drives the ISTJ's motivations. ISTJs are perhaps the most clear-cut, most um, order-oriented types out of all the out of all the different types available. They are the ones which are very much about everything needing to make sense, needing to be clear, needing to be ordered. And these are the types that will wade into the environments of ambiguity and enforce an order, bring things into a pinning down of sense, you could say. They have no room in them for nonsense. Uh, ISTJs enforce what is structured, you could say. They have this, often have a very strong, rational, orderly mind for how they make sense of things around them. They understand criteria, and they're very specific about making sure those criteria are absolutely true, are absolutely um, unimpeachable. Um, they have a rigor in their ability to break apart uh, dodgy or false ideas, to find and assert the absolute truth underneath, or to discard the thing which lacks in truth. They are very uncompromising in making sure that whatever they do is utterly consistent, utterly impregnable in its logical argumentation. And they lean towards formulating clear structures, clear rules, clear boundaries, anything like this to make sure that their environment is ordered, is made sense of. Now, supporting their introverted thinking, therefore, is an extroverted sensation. This is how an ISTJ is different to an INTJ, whereas the INTJ lacks the ability to enforce their structures onto reality. They don't particularly care for it. They prefer to explore different possibilities around their structures. ISTJs, these are the ones who enforce the order. 
These are the ones who say, this is what makes sense, so I will make it so in my reality. I will impose that onto my surroundings. I will draw a line in the sand, and whoever thinks it clever to cross said line will have the consequences of their actions enforced upon them. These rules are made writ either in nature or through the force of my will. That is the nature of an ISTJ, to make sure that the structure is upheld by real-life consequence. So these aren't types that allow for ambiguity, expiration, all that sort of stuff. No, it's a very clear-cut, very confident, this is what the truth is, and this is what we're acting upon. So you find they make natural enforcers, natural policemen, hence the name inspector, can often come to account here. Um, but could very easily also be rule, give law givers to a society, a judge in society, someone who, without arbitrariness, weighs things up according to what the rules are and applies that. And saying that is not necessarily the case that ISTJs will be um, necessarily the upholders of the established order. If they disagree with the established order and finds it to be faulty or hypocritical, they could even be the leader of a revolution against said order to tear it down and start afresh with a new order. Because that's the thing. They don't compromise. They are types which need to, if something is untrue, it needs to be torn asunder and the new structure brought. It's that absoluteness in their clarity, which is de is defi definitional for an ISTJ. Um Next, you move to the super ego, super ego block, because the ego block, that's what they're strong at. They value what they bring to the world. Now, this is what is kind of expected of them, but they don't necessarily conform to it. So this is the realm of introverted feeling and extroverted intuition. ISGJs are types that often struggle with seeing and factoring in different people's perspectives and taking Per making personal exceptions for each individual and their unique circumstances and exploring those unique circumstances. For an ISTJ, the rules need to be applied consistently in all cases. It is the hand of justice and not necessarily the hand of mercy when it comes to an ISTJ. So these are types which can struggle in this sort of very FI and any kind of space. Uh, what they can do somewhat is their introverted feeling. ISTJs are types which can build the, um, stronger, closer relationships with others. They can be quite loyal to certain people. They know how to manage people on the one-to-one -to, -one to some degree. They aren't um, utterly masterful at it, but they can certainly handle that. They can manage that well. Uh, I, you can think of examples of ISTJs, those who are a bit more ambitious, may climb the, say, a political hierarchy or something like that through their managing of close one-to-one -one relationships in backroom conversations. They aren't ones for the big public's display. That's not where their strength lies, but they can certainly apply their will through their one-to-one -one relationships quite effectively. Um, so yes, they are good at forming forming that, but they struggle with the idea of compromising their principles or their structures, their ideologies in favor of personal one-to-one -one favoritism. So these are types who are inclined to see people less in terms of their personal character, and more in terms of their adherence to the right structure or way of thinking that the ISTJ expects. And when it comes to applying their rules and structures, they will, they will not be let, so interested in personal intentions, what someone meant to do and all that sort of thing. They'll be more interested in whether the rule has been transgressed or not and what the appropriate um, form of justice is for the transgression of that rule. Hence, justice is applied across um, different people based on their dictate. Um, now, what they are less able to do, what is their blind spot? That would be extroverted intuition. As well, an ISTJ is aware of their personal attitudes towards others and can build close relationships with people and maintain these loyalties relatively well. They struggle far more with being able to think outside of their experiences. These are not types who think outside the box. These are not types that are comfortable with keeping things open-ended. 
and able to go into all sorts of directions and possibilities. The ISDJ seeks to remove ambiguity from the equation, to define things absolutely and clearly and correctly to the point where there's any, there isn't even any room for a debate. If there is a debate, it's because the ISDJ has found the way to shut it down by tearing apart the alternative point of view. They don't allow possibility to run away from them. They aren't types that are comfortable with open-endedness. They need things to be absolutely clear, and they are the creators of not only clarity, but also certainty. There's an absoluteness there, that certainty which ISTJs bring, which you wouldn't have found with, say, the ENTPs or INTJs. These are very much an ISTJ, um, the um, TI and SE way of doing things. Um, next, we have the super id block. Now, this is what is weak still, but now valued. So for ISTJs, these are quite intense characters. They have a certain steeliness of intensity. They are longing to feel impassioned. The problem is ISTJs come across as kind of cold, sometimes a bit stiff at times, you might say. These are not charismatic figures. They can have the sort of strong, silent, uh, tough which can have its own kind of charisma, one could suppose, but these are not types which are um, especially warm or effervescent. If you think of, say, Vladimir Putin as an example, tough, but not, um, not necessarily gregarious or loquacious in that sort of way. No, when it comes to um, extroverted feeling and introverted intuition, the, L the, the, the uh, ISTJ is looking for others to provide that inspiration and that sense of um, that sense of uplifting mood and energy towards a higher purpose. So, first of all, you have a suggestive function. This is what the ISTJ is very weak at. They are not charismatic people. They often, whereas they can certainly use cold, relentless logic to make absolute sense of things and brook no opposition. These are not the ones who are going to sway hearts and minds. They may at times come across too stiff, too technical, too much of a cold fish to really get that point of view across. Um, you may find some ISTJs may end up being quite isolated because they're their logical positions are not ones which are readily accepted or popular to others. And the ISTJ won't allow popularity to change what they think to be absolutely true. They will embark on what is true until people agree with them. They won't bend and contort themselves for what the crowd wants, while at the same time wanting the crowd to agree with them. But they won't budge an inch in that. They can be incredibly stubborn, ISTJs. Um, you think of characters such as um, Peter Hitchens, as an example, another example of someone who can take often quite unpopular positions and may have been found out to have been right all along, but he wasn't going to budge on his position at, at all at that particular point. So ISTJs don't, um, they, they're not only are they quite stubborn, they come across as very stubborn, can come across perhaps as quite arrogant at times. Uh, they can basically not ha be so effective at coming across in a way which is going to lead people to actually flock to how they think. They struggle with that. They struggle with bringing people on board and they greatly admire those who are able through that kind of charisma to bring people on board, to um, infuse people about this underlying structural truth which the ISTJ finds and sets out. Um, now, what the ISTJ is more able to do themselves, however, is introverted intuition. The ISTJ over time starts to become more aware of something deeper, more higher, more transcendent, some kind of goal or outcome or purpose, which becomes the, the grantor of greater meaning and deeper meaning to the truth they've set out as being absolutely clear and consistent and just and right, whatever that is. So ISTJs are looking for that higher, deeper quality. And over time, they start to know what that is. When an ISTJ finds that path of meaning, of purpose, whatever it is, of significance, the, that's then allows them to narrow down all the other possibilities. ISTJs are types that, because they don't brook ambiguity, they don't like to open things up, 
It's with introvert intuition that they learn to truly close down all alternative uh, positions to just the path ahead at which they will go forwards, uh, often with um, sheer determination. Um, nothing can then turn an ISTJ away from what they see to be the main goal going forwards. You think of someone like a Nicola Sturgeon in the, the SMP in the UK, nothing would get in her way of securing uh, independence for Scotland until um, her inability to judge the mood um, got in her way and caused her to be removed. So the introvert intuition is sort of something which can lead an ITJ without a sense of nuance to narrowing down the possibility to one outcome and only pursuing that outcome um, very stubbornly uh, without the ability for anyone to really dissuade them from their view. These are the types which are hardest of all the types to dissuade from that path once they've set out upon it. Um, so now we get to the id block. This is what the ISTJ doesn't value but is good at. Well, this is about the day-to-day -day practicality, the making things work through tinkering and trying it out and experimenting, a very sort of pragmatic approach to uh, thinking and sensation. ISTJs are relentlessly logical. They are precise, meticulous, clear-cut in their nature. They don't like so much the mess of just trying things out and collecting data and seeing what works and what doesn't in that sort of gradual, tinkering, uh, cumulative way. It's very much for them, is it right or is it wrong? If it's wrong, you tear it down, you build it up from its base again in the right way. These are not types which gradually tweak. So when it comes to the ignoring function of an ISTJ, that's going to be the extroverted thinking. ISTJs are not inclined to think pragmatically. Yes, they can certainly do things pragmatically. They certainly know how to make things work and ground their ideology in reality to some degree. Yes, they will do that. They can also build their sense of what the truth is from observing how things work, and they tend to acquire a great deal of factually informed knowledge over time, which enables them to pick out what the underlying truth really is. But these are not types that simply go for, oh, what may work best and is most conducive or convenient. These are not types of convenience. These are types of faith in this being the truth this being what makes sense and everything else being nonsense. So these are not types that are going to easily compromise and find the way that leads to a practical advantage here, but actually means compromising on what you believe in. That's not the point of an ICJ. They can certainly see where what other compromises which don't uh, go against their structures they may be willing to make, but they're not going to do that if it goes against, runs counter to the structure they happen to uphold and believe in. You can sometimes see ISTJs behaving quite differently simply because you might not know exactly what their structure is. Of course, they might not necessarily tell you, um, but this is meant to be the rule in terms of our introverted thinking over extroverted thinking for an ISTJ. Um, yes. Now, the other part here is the demonstrative function, and this is introverted sensation. So whereas an ISTJ will only use a sort of more practical, more pragmatic and situational kind of logic sparingly where it is required by their introverted thinking, right, to do it, right, where it's in line with their principles, it's in line with the structure they're trying to uphold. Introverted sensation, on the other hand, they're going to be using far more readily and in the background. What you'll see with ISTJs is it, although they have that steely intensity, these are not types that are likely to burn out. They are not types that like to fill the room with too much energy, you could say. It's very contained with ISTJ. There's, a, there's almost a sense of um, un, um, not un, well, n not overly expressed confidence but it's there it's a stillness it's a calm it's a sense of complete control to the point we don't really even need to move so much but you know that the istj has that control over their surroundings it is that ability to stay balanced to stay calm to keep the sword 
achieved, you can say, until the right moment to strike. And the ISTJ has that in spades. They know exactly when to be have their feet on the ground, how to be aware of the balance and flow and harmony in the day to day, how to keep their their struggles towards a certain ideology or philosophy, whatever it is, sustainable over time, rather than blow hard and blow hot and cold. These are types who maintain a very even keeled rate of energy use in their lives. And also to help them in their structure and correctness, they have a fantastic eye for detail. They'll keep things very clear cut, both aesthetically and logically. And they'll drill in in detail to exactly what is sticking out to remove the problem from the root. So introverted sensation is a very useful tool for an ISTJ in order to be more clear, more absolute in their approach and more sustainable in their delivery towards the outcomes they think are most important. Anyway, that was the ISTJ. If you want to learn more about the various types, please consider taking my course, my course Introducing Socionics, which is, in my opinion, the best approach to Jungian typology, the only true approach, you could say, if you're thinking more like an ISTJ. Well, it is the best so far, of course. It's certainly a great deal better than the Myers-Briggs type indicator, which you may be more used to. Either way, if you want to find out more if what I've said has intrigued you, please email worldsocionics.hotmail.com with uh, an email titled course. I can tell you more about the course and how to give you as much knowledge as is currently in my head about typology. So, yes, there's also a video following up to give you more information. So thank you. Thank you for tuning in. All the best.